In this episode, we will talk about the electroweak interaction, which is the unification of the weak interaction with the electromagnetic interaction. Let's enjoy it! As it is well known, electromagnetism is the unification of the electricity and magnetism. The whole dynamic of the electromagnetic interaction is understood classically throughout the Maxwell equations. At the quantum level, we understand that the electromagnetic interaction is mediated by photons. The theory describing the electromagnetic interaction at the quantum level is called quantum electrodynamics or QED. On the other hand, we have the weak interaction, which is the most universal interaction after gravity because it is able to operate over all the fermions. The weak interaction is however particular. First, it is the only interaction allowing possible changes of flavor and changes in the charge for the fermions during the interaction processes. Additionally, the weak interaction doesn't allow the existence of bond states, as the other interactions do but it rather appears for processes involving decay of products, as well as scattering. The change in electric charge for the fermions under the weak interaction is a natural consequence of the fact that some of the carriers of the weak interaction, namely the bosons W, transport electric charge by themselves. The weak interaction, in addition, doesn't respect the symmetry under parity operation. This means that a reaction which occurs by virtue of the weak interaction doesn't occur in the same way in its space inverted form. The weak interaction, in addition, doesn't respect the symmetries under charge conjugation. This is reflected by the preference for the left-handed electrons and the right-handed positrons in beta decay. The weak interaction doesn't even obey the CP symmetry, which is the combined operation of parity and charge conjugation. This is the list of quantities conserved and non-conserved by the weak interaction, in comparison with the strong and electromagnetic interaction. Note that the weak interaction is the only one violating parity, charge conjugation, and the combination of both transformations called CP symmetry. The violation of CP symmetry means that the weak interaction also violates the time reversal symmetry, although it still respects the CPT symmetry. This means that the processes in the weak interaction are still invariant under the successive applications of the charge conjugation, parity, and time reversal operations. The weak interaction is not only mediated by charged bosons, in addition, it is also mediated by a neutral boson called Z boson. The W and Z bosons have both very large masses, which make them very unstable, and as a consequence, the weak interaction has a very short range of propagation. The weak interaction is the main responsible for the humans to have the possibility of constructing nuclear weapons like the atomic bomb based on processes of fission as well as the hydrogen bomb based on fusion processes. These same processes allow us to have nuclear plants for generating electricity for our homes. But wait a minute, being the weak interaction so different with respect to the electromagnetic interaction, how can it be possible to unify them? During the Big Bang, all the interactions were a single one. After the Big Bang, when the universe became colder, gravity separated fields from other interactions, and subsequently the strong interaction did the same. Subsequently, the electroweak interaction separated into weak interaction and electromagnetism. We can perceive each separation process for the interactions as a phase transition. Interestingly, the energy of our accelerators has been enough 
for proving that at high energies, the weak and the electromagnetic interaction appear from a single unified fundamental interaction. Does this mean that the photons, being the carriers of the electromagnetic interaction, are equivalent to the bosons C and W from the weak interaction? One fundamental difference of the carriers for both interactions is that while the photons are massless and stable, the bosons C and W are very heavy and as a consequence unstable. Then how can we explain such unification? The unification comes out via Higgs mechanism. Although the bosons Z and W are similar to the photons because they are intrinsically massless, they all appear as different degrees of freedom from a single theory, namely the electroweak theory. At low temperatures, the Z and W bosons acquire their mass via the Higgs mechanism. The Higgs mechanism requires the spontaneous symmetry breakage of a gauge symmetry. What we mean from the previous explanation is that from the same electroweak theory, the Z bosons, the W bosons, as well as the photons emerge. Although the Higgs mechanism gives mass to the Z and W bosons, as well as to the electron and muon, inside the same theory, still it doesn't give mass to the neutrinos. Since the separation between the weak interaction and the electromagnetic interaction can be perceived as a phase transition, there is naturally a critical temperature above which both interactions are unified. The temperature is approximately 10 to the 16 kelvins. Over this temperature, the bosons Z and W are massless and the weak interaction becomes an infinite range interaction just like the electromagnetism. The electroweak theory was proved experimentally when the bosons Z and W were observed by the UA1 collaboration at the appropriate masses in 1983. Also, the electroweak theory is one of the biggest achievements of the theoretical particle physics, the successful Higgs mechanism able to give mass to the bosons Z and W, still is not able to give mass to the neutrinos. However, the experiments have proved that the neutrinos are indeed massive and that they oscillate. How to solve this discrepancy between theory and experiment? We will discuss about this issue in future episodes. In summary, the electroweak unification occurs via Higgs mechanism. This theory has been proved experimentally with the electroweak unification occurring at high temperature. If you liked this video, please give us a like, share the link, and subscribe to the channel. More videos in Spanish and in English are coming very soon. Continue with us.